morning. Welcome to Sunday School for Sunday, February 7th, 2021. My name is Carolyn Hayes. I'm the Director of Children and Young Families for Gaithersburg Presbyterian Church, and welcome to Sunday School. Our scriptures, there are two scripture readings for today, are Mark 1, 29 through 39, and Isaiah 40, 21 through 31. We'll pray, read the scriptures, and get started. Gracious and loving Lord, thank you for today. Please open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, and open our eyes to you and to your word. Help us to learn the lessons that you reveal in your scriptures, even through things that happened so long ago. They still have meaning in our lives today. Help us to see you at work in our world each and every day. Help us to see you in the people that we encounter each and every day. And help us to act like we do those things. Please help us to listen to you as you encourage us and guide us and point us in the right directions. Please help us to be the disciples you put us here to be. Please bless this study and us to thy service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Isaiah, this is really a beautiful, beautiful passage. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look at the heavens. Who created all of these? Who brings out each one of the starry host one by one and calls them each by name? Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I think that is just beautiful. Isaiah really speaks to me. And Jesus. Uh, Mark's story of Jesus. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought Jesus, all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. This is the witness to God's word. Thanks be to God. Now, last week we heard about Jesus teaching with authority, like he knew what he was doing and saying in the synagogue. He was continuing the work that his cousin John had started before he was put in prison, and that was to tell the people 
in the area around Galilee that the kingdom of God was near, that they should repent, they should turn around, they should turn their lives around and turn away from the world and toward the things of God. And also, as we mentioned last week, there were really two big pieces to that puzzle. Um, that we need to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we need to love each other as we love ourselves. Today, we get to learn a new word. I love learning new words. And this word is Shema, which means two things. And that's that was what the beginning of that Isaiah passage said. Um, it means to hear what I have to say. So do you not know? Have you not heard? Shema. It means to hear what I have to say, and it also means to obey what I am saying. Now, one of the things that I think is so interesting about that word is that that's what Jesus, Jesus lived Shema. Jesus taught people and he did it. He obeyed. He taught what God wants us to do, and he was doing it. He was obeying. So when Simon is, when Jesus is healing Simon's mother, he is doing three things. He is loving his neighbor as himself. He is treating Simon's mother-in-law with love, with respect, with mercy, with dignity, by healing her. In doing that, he is doing what God wants us to do. We are loving our neighbors as ourselves. And when we do that, when he did that, he was showing his deep respect and love for God because he was doing what God wants us to do. Now, I think if it was me, and I'm gonna just going to put it that way, if it was me, after I had finished teaching in the synagogue, and those services go on for a long time, I would probably be tired, and I would probably be hungry. So when Jesus and James and John got to Simon and Andrew's house, if it was me, I would be really looking forward to lunch or dinner and um, a little rest not Jesus. Mm -mm. He may have been tired. He may have been hungry. But as it says in Isaiah, those who hope in the Lord will run and not grow weary. He just kept going. It was like he was energized by doing the work that God wanted him to do. Um, so I have a question for you. Have you ever, when you were doing something good for other people, found that you could keep going longer than you thought you could? I know I ask this question a lot, but what are you doing to show God's love to other people? How do you like other people to show God's love to you? Um, I, to show God's love to other people, well, one of the things I like to do is to teach people, to share with people. Um, and a lot of times I'm ending up learning more than I started off knowing when I talk to people, particularly kids. But I like to share scripture readings with people, and I like to learn about them. Um, and I like to, I also really, really, really like to have people over to my house for dinner or lunch. I like to bring people together. I like to provide them with a, with a fun experience. I love doing that. It, it just makes me happy. And then you sit around and talk all afternoon. I love doing that. Um, I also really love to create a beautiful garden for my neighbors. 
I know that sounds silly because I do get to enjoy it too, but I really and truly do do it largely for my neighbors. It would be much easier to just grass the whole thing over and just mow it, but that's not as pretty. And yeah, it does. It takes a lot more work, but I like doing it and I like providing a pretty place for my neighbors to enjoy when they walk past. Now, are there things that I wish I was better at? Yes, there are. For instance, I am really not as good as I would like to be about reaching out to other people, calling them or writing them little notes. Um, what are you talking about? Mrs. Hayes, what are you talking about? Well, do you like getting notes in the mail? Do you like getting the little booklets that we send out? <laughs> I like getting stuff in the mail from my friends. I really do. Um, so it's nice to get a little note in the mail from someone just, just saying that you're thinking about them. And I'm terrible about doing that. I don't do it nearly as often as I should. Um, I don't write people notes when I know that they're going through, you know, just a challenging time in their life. You know, maybe they're taking a really hard class or something. I don't write them little notes to say, you can do it. Um, and when people go through very difficult times in their lives, very, very difficult, like very sad times, I really do try to be good about writing notes during those times, but even then, I don't always do it, but I went out and I bought two cards because I have two friends I want to send cards to this week. And now that I've said it to you out loud, I have to do it. And next Sunday, we'll talk about whether I did it or not. So I want you to think about it. What are things that you like doing that make you feel good about doing things for other people? And what are things that you could be better at? Um, if you're eight years old or six years old, sometimes there's not a whole lot of people that you can go help right now because we all need to stay, um, stay in our bubbles. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do for your families. If you're a big sister or brother, you can play with your little sister or brother. If you are a little sister or brother, you can let your big sister or brother alone for a little while. <laughs> um, if you are either big or little sister, you might take your dishes to the sink and rinse them off without being told. Or maybe you do have a job. Maybe your job is to load the dishwasher or take the trash out or I don't know, whatever your job might be. Um, clean up your room make your bed, put your laundry away. Can I tell you how many times I got folded laundry in the laundry hamper back because she, my daughter never bothered to put it away? Oh, don't do that to your mother. Don't do that. Show her you love her by putting your laundry away. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a great week. I hope you had a great week this last week. I hope you and your families are staying well and taking good care of each other. Wear your masks, stay in your bubbles so that we can get back together pretty soon. I so look forward to seeing you all. Bye.